Welcome to the Saturday Conversation. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by Jerry Hamilton. Uh, the Saturday Conversation brought to you by Laura Baker and Keller Williams Realty. Uh, hey, Jerry, I've got to ask you this, man. Uh, you're in the car already, uh, headed to the junior day. Uh, and I shouldn't even call it junior day. It's just a visit day uh, right. with a lot of big-time players coming in. My count, two dozen people, folks that uh, the Longhorns really want uh, as part of their recruit 2025 recruiting class. Uh, whether it's offensive line, defensive line, quarterback, running back, uh, wide receiver, defensive backs, linebacker, all the – just name it. There's yeah. a top guy at every single position expected in this week. And, of course, they even have more coming in next week. But uh, you're you're going to be in Austin uh, for this event, uh, Jerry, today, and we'll have more about it later. But uh, what are your thoughts on the quarterback position overall? Uh, obviously, Keelan Russell, another guy at Duncanville, not expected in. Uh, but someone that uh, everybody's keep their eye on a little bit at this point. Yeah, no, I think uh, K.J. Lacey coming in is big, obviously. He's going to come back in on April 20th and for June 21st through 23rd official visit. That means K.J. Lacey gets to spend time with DeCorian Moore, Kalik Lockett, Jamie French, Kelshawn Johnson, all those talented receivers coming in this weekend. And then 2026 quarterback Troy Hunes coming in from uh, Mission Hills there in San Marcos, California, down uh, near that Carlsbad, San Diego area. Look, he was one of the three quarterbacks Texas has offered in 2026. He's the second 2026 quarterback to visit this spring. Dia Bell from Plantation American Heritage, son of former NBA defensive specialist and player Raja Bell. He was in for a spring practice in March. Now Troy Hoon's in for the uh, April 6th weekend scrimmage. Uh, so Texas has 2025 quarterback com uh, commitment in, a top target in 2026 in. Um, and yeah, Keelan Russell, I spoke with him uh, at the uh, tra the district track meet, 6A11 district track meet. He's still coming in on the 20th. Uh, so he's not coming in this weekend. So they have the quarterback commitment and KJ Lacey coming in for the first of three visits and Troy Hoon, one of the top two or three quarterbacks on the board in 2026 coming in. Interesting. So uh, later today, obviously, uh, they will have a scrimmage, a mock scrimmage uh, at the University of Texas, not available to media. Uh, it will just be recruits and their families, uh, as well as uh, the team itself uh, participating. Uh, but, uh, Jerry, they, that's what all of this is about today, mm -hmm. is that the players are going to get, the recruits are going to get to come in, see everything, maybe go to some pre-meetings, uh, get checked in, and, and then go to the actual scrimmage itself. I think the scrimmage gets started here in a little bit. Uh, but my, my, my next point, you mentioned the quarterbacks and K.J. Lacey and uh, Troy Hewn, and then also, of course, Keelan Russell. Let's talk about the running backs before we get to those wide receivers, because you already mentioned, uh, I mean, that's that's a blue chip list, the wide receiver yes. list. Two guys expected in as of right now, uh, out of Tyler Chapel Hill, Ricky Stewart, uh, a Texas-based product, and then Jordan Davison out of modern day in Santa Ana, California, also expected in at this point uh, in the morning. Yeah, those and those are the two 2025 running backs right now. Uh, Texas like the Kylan Deer, but we've been saying on, here and on, on TexasFootball.com, that was a long shot. He committed to Ole Miss over Alabama. It was going to be one of those two. Uh, he's out of Quitman, Mississippi. So he was the third guy that they really like. So I do expect Texas to take an in-state running back in the 25 class, uh, and that's leaning to Ricky Stewart, who I think loves Texas. Uh, that offer meant a lot to him, and – uh, it, that was very popular at his mom's workplace there in, in the Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill area of Tyler. Then there's Jordan Davis, and this one's gone back and forth. Texas leads. Okay, what Ohio State making a move. Oh, Alabama was making a move. Then Nick Saban retired. Uh, Oregon in the picture. Uh, it really feels like it's going to come down to Texas and Ohio State for Jordan Davis. And at this point, not wanting to rule out an Oregon or even in Alabama. Uh, but it's big to get him back on campus this weekend ahead of a June official visit because obviously he was at Ohio State. Uh, last weekend, that was a huge visit weekend for the Buckeyes, and there was a lot of chatter coming out of there about Ohio State leading, which before that there was chatter about Texas leading. So it's great for Tashar Choice and Sark that they get their top two guys on campus this weekend. Uh, I think this is a huge players recruit players weekend, Bobby. I mean, this is one where a Brandon Baker conversation with a Jordan Davison a Cedric Baxter conversation with Jordan Davison. Some of those things outside of coaching uh, conversations I think are big. We're getting to that point where players recruit players, um, and I think that's all going to be big. Because Texas is in on – I mean, we'll talk about the same teams with Jamie French in a second and DeCorey and Moore and Kalik Lockett, but uh, Texas is battling everybody you want to be battling for these guys, and Ohio State's one of those teams. 
It's it's interesting because Ohio State just hired the Oregon running back coach as well. Yes. Which kind of uh, you know mur- made that that uh, recruitment a little more murky. I guess could be yeah. the best way to describe it. Of course, Tashard <laughs> Choice is one of the best recruiters in in college football uh, and has the uh, he really has the 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 skins on the wall the show for it having uh, not only Bijan Robinson and uh, Roshan Johnson in last year's draft but now this year's Jeff Jonathan Brooks may be the first overall running back selected as well so uh, it'll be interesting uh, just uh, where Texas goes there uh, before I go on to wide receivers Jerry unless do you want to have something to add to that uh, yeah yeah racing racing Guillory the 2026 commit he's going to be in town as well Texas loves racing Guillory. He's the uh, running back out of Alito, the sophomore junior to be. And then with Ohio State and Texas with Jordan Davison. At some point, you know, a school's going to get get it to shard choice in one thing you can't fight back against. Travion Henderson and Quinshaw Junkins are expected to go pro after this year. Who's Texas going to lose? Yeah, maybe I mean, Jaden Blue. Maybe Jaden maybe Blue. Jayden Blue. Maybe, but that's Ohio State's got something to sell for a 2025 running back. Right. Interesting. Now. All right. I want to say thank you to our sponsor. That's Keller Williams agent, Laura Baker. She's with the Andy Allen team. Uh, she can help you with any and all your real estate needs in and around the Austin area. She's been doing it for decades and uh, lifelong a Longhorn as well as law, lifelong Austinite. Uh, 512-784-0505. Nobody knows Austin. Uh, like Laura Baker, and nobody has the experience she does either. 512-784-0505. Laura, we appreciate your ongoing sponsorship of On Texas Football. Hey, Jerry, you mentioned these receivers. That's yeah. one of the highlights of the group. I mean, you got two guys that are ranked five-star uh, in French and Lockett by different uh, folks, uh, m- excuse me, and more. So that's three different guys that are rated five-stars. Then you have somebody like Kelshawn Johnson, that you hit, you love him. He's from Hitchcock. Uh, four different guys that we know of that are high, high caliber receivers for the Longhorns coming in this weekend. Yeah, no doubt. And obviously, DeCorian Moore is the headliner. Every all Texas fans are salivating because he's committed to LSU and he's from Duncanville, right? How in the world can he go to Texas over LSU? So he's the guy in this class uh, that has everybody's attention. Um, and, and for good reason. He is He's a super freak. I watched him at the track meet uh, Wednesday, that District uh, 6A11 track meet. Now, he's super freak, right? I mean, and that's going to be the recruitment Texas fans follow probably the most in this cycle. But Jamie French is coming on campus for the first time. Texas has had success in Orlando. They've gotten into IMG. I think they can do well in Tampa. Um, there's no Tampa shield against Texas, just hurricanes. I think Texas, Texas can do well there. But Jacksonville's an area Texas hasn't really plucked somebody. So they're going in uh, for Jamie French, one of the top receivers in the country at Mandarin High, um, which the talent moves around from school to school in that area, depending on who's where, coaching where, and whatnot. But, and look, this is one of those battles, Ohio State, Miami, Florida State, former Alabama commitment. I mean, it's pretty much got it all. And he already has an official visit scheduled in June. But I think after this weekend, Texas have a really good feeling about where they think this recruitment's headed. Uh, but the fact that he has two visits uh, scheduled already, this is the first time he's been to Austin as a recruit. So this is a big couple of days for Texas. He's also going to be in Dallas for seven on seven. This is a big couple of days here for Texas uh, ahead of this June uh, official visit again at, at Ohio State recently, right? So there's a theme here of how some of these visits are working. Uh, but it, J- uh, Jamie French, big time receiver. Then there's Kalik Lockett. Again, he's been to Penn State and Ohio State recently. LSU, USC, AM, everybody's in on Kalik Lockett. Uh, I think Kalik Lockett likes Texas. Um, he talks to KJ Lacey. I mean, there's co- some good connections there, but he hasn't been on campus in a while. He wasn't there for the January 20 junior day. So things have changed at Texas since he's been on campus. They've been, they've won a Big 12 championship and been to a college football playoff. He went to a game earlier in the season, but it's been a while since he's been back. Uh, so th- it's gonna it's gonna feel a little different to him now uh, around the Texas program. And then look, we Kelshawn Johnson is he's almost like a state of Florida kid to me, Bobby. He he plays. He's at a small school. He plays multiple sports. He doesn't work with a wide receiver trainer like a margin hooks or anything. So he's really raw. But that also. It, talks to his upside and speaks to his upside. So, I mean, if he's the fourth-ranked guy in this group, and I think he's underrated nationally, if he's the fourth-ranked guy in this group, it's a hell of a weekend. 
Yep. I, I'm just looking at it. It's, it's incredible. Then you, you add in another guy, Jerry, and I want to say this about French before I go forward. Yes, he's from Jacksonville, but I also want to add the idea that he is also an out-of-state guy. And, you know, oh, well, it's going to be a really hard guy for Texas to grab. But if you think about it, Texas also got Ryan Wingo out of an out-of-state situation. Yeah. So don't don't count the Longhorns out by there. It may be a long shot at the outset, but not when it, it comes time to put pen to paper. All right, uh, Nick Townsend, kind of a surprise at tight end. In some ways, if you would have asked me six months ago, would Texas be involved here? And would he maybe be at the top of the tight end board? I don't know that I would have said that. Then he goes out, the spring to Caney young man, goes out and runs a 10, 900 meter at what, what, it, how big is he, Jerry? 215. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so uh, look, Jeff Banks knows what he wants at tight end. He looks like he's pinpointing Nick Townsend to some degree. There's some other guys on the board as well, uh, but certainly one to, to keep an eye on. Yeah. And, and Nick Townsend's a guy who, He's a four-star prospect as a tight end or an edge guy, a linebacker. I mean, he, he's that good. Both people, Power Five schools have offered him at both spots. He wants to play tight end, Texas smartly, recruiting him at tight end. Not unlike uh, JT Sanders. Not right, a- exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, and I think I, I think Texas has at least a 50-50 shot with uh, Nick Townsend. I think they've done a good job in this recruitment. But, but, again, big visit coming up this weekend ahead of a June 21st through 23rd official visit. That's when Texas will have all three of their top tight end targets on campus. That's Amari Winston, the commitment. Uh, that is uh, Nick Townsend and Keati Armstrong from Jasper. Keati Armstrong visits Texas April 13th, not this weekend. He's at AM this weekend, I believe. So uh, he'll be in on the 13th, Nick Ander, uh, Nick, uh, sorry, Townsend this weekend. Uh, but he's one of the very best two-way prospects in the country. He happens to play tight end. Uh, and he's, I, I think he's tremendous at it because of his speed and ball skills. All right. That, the, the offensive line group, pretty impressive. Uh, John Mills coming in from San Francisco. Then you have the uh, Coleman brothers, uh, Jordan and Devin out of Cedar Hill, uh, as well as Lamont Rogers, a uh, big lineman out of the uh, Metroplex area. And then Tyler Thomas down at Dickinson. Uh, big humans abound in Austin today. Yeah. And I think uh, the Coleman uh, twins, the triplets are all going to be that Isaiah Coleman. He's, uh, a little, he's probably Baylor, Texas Tech, UTSA, really after him hard. Uh, but there's triplets. The biggest, uh, first time I've ever covered triplets that, I mean, I think that all three of them exceed a thousand pounds together. <laughs> um, but look, Jordan and Devin, I think have, could commit to Texas right now. And that's actually news to some people. Uh, I think they could commit to Texas right now. Uh, Jordan's kind of right tackle, swing player, guard right tackle. Devin Coleman's an interior guy who transitioning from D-line to offensive line plays for Marcus Hutchins, former Texas offensive tackle that played at DeSoto, now coaching at Cedar Hill. That has to hurt his heart, but that's the job, right? Um, but uh, I, he's he's he transitioned Devin to guard this year, or offensive line, and, and Devin is a very high-end guard. I really believe that. Both these guys' tape is really good. I've seen him in person at Cedar Hill. Uh, they, they both squat 575, 600 pounds. I think both those guys could commit to Texas if they wanted to. Now, Jordan has an official visit scheduled to Oklahoma. Uh, both of them have visits scheduled to SMU and Baylor, um, which is something to watch. And uh, Ole Miss is also in it. Tennessee's also in it for Jordan Coleman. Uh, but Texas likes them. John Mills, such an interesting recruitment. I think Texas is probably the favorite there. For Mills, he's had multiple family members, and I'm talking like four or five that were athletes at the University of Washington, whether that was water polo, basketball, volleyball, football. Um, so there's a long uh, lineage there of, fa- of family members that played at University of Washington. Now they did go through a coaching change at Washington, uh, and he'll be on campus with his father and one of his coaches this weekend, which is interesting. He's also scheduled to be back June 14th through 16th for an official visit. He could absolutely commit to Texas right now. The question is, could Texas get him in the boat before that Washington official visit, which is May 31st, June 2nd? We'll see on that. I don't know which way that goes, but I know he has a committable offer to Texas as well. Then Lamont Rogers. Look, this is Texas doing work. This is Kyle Flood doing work. I talked to Lamont Rogers Tuesday. He told me, and I put it on OnTexasFootball.com. I put his visit schedule out there. It was LSU this weekend, then FSU, then Tennessee. Well, he changed that. Him and his mom are going to be in Austin uh, today. Uh, for the visit. So that changed uh, Thursday night on Texas football, broke that news. Lamont Rogers was coming in. Uh, so uh, Tyler Thomas coming off the foot injury. We'll see what happens there. But uh, Jonte Newman 
Uh, also a possibility. Uh, we'll see what happens there. All right. Uh, we'll we'll be having wait coming back for updates throughout the day, Jerry. Uh, if you as you hear them, et cetera, we'll have them either on on Texas football or if it's necessary, we'll do a live as well because uh, you know we don't know if there could be commitments or not today. Uh, we don't think so, but maybe. Yeah, timelines change. I yeah, mean, timelines change when parents and, and athletes get on campus. Uh, they want to go ahead and make decisions, et cetera. All right, let's let's flip the defense and look. The defensive line group's really impressive across the board, whether it's defensive tackle or defensive end. Uh, Malik Autry out of uh, uh, Opelika, yeah. Alabama. Uh, Hayden Lowe out of uh, California. Uh, then you have the guys that are in state, uh, whether that's Zion Williams, uh, uh, DJ Sanders, Chase Sims, Smith Arogbo, uh, as well. Uh, Ike Okafor, uh, yeah. a uh, guy that's coming on late right now uh, for the Longhorns as well. Uh, those guys all uh, going to be on campus today, uh, expected at least. Uh, what What are your thoughts there? I think this is a huge visit uh, a day and weekend for these guys because, look, the reality is uh, this is the first time Zion Williams from Lufkin, uh, let alone Malik Autry, um, any of these guys, the interior defensive linemen, get to sit in a meeting room and watch Kenny Baker. Okay. Zion Williams had done that with Bo Davis, whether that was when Bo was at Texas or at LSU. He's never done this with Kenny Baker. Um, Malik Autry is going to meet Kenny Baker for the first time and then sit in on a meeting room for the first time, right? So this is a big visit weekend uh, for Kenny Baker because new at the job and not coming from college, coming from the NFL, these guys weren't familiar with him. All they know is he's got NFL on his resume, which is a good start. But now they actually get to see him work, whether that's in the meeting room, watch how he communicates with guys, or then on the field for the scrimmage at 11 and then the conversations afterwards. So this is a big weekend uh, for Kenny Baker and the Longhorns on the defensive line recruiting. Look, I think Zion Williams, Zion Williams is LSU Texas with AM third and TCU fourth. I think that's where this is going to hang around. Uh, obviously, I said on, on uh, Coffee and Football this week, his, his girlfriend's scheduled to go to LSU right now. Do I think that's a decision maker in this recruitment? I do not. Do I think it helps LSU? Sure, it can't hurt. Uh, but I think uh, Zion will make his own decision. Uh, but he's in town with his mom, uh, which that's a big, big visit for Texas. He will come back for a June official visit. Texas gets the last visit, June 21st through 23rd. Malik Autry, complete wild card. He's committed to Auburn. Bobby, we both know Opelika is a, a bike ride away from the Auburn campus. You can you can drive it or you could ride your bike and get there, too. Uh, so it's not that far. Um, but he's visiting everywhere. He was at Florida last week and he's going to go to Oregon. He's going to go to USC. I think he could come back to Texas for an official visit. Will it be tough for any of these schools at the end of the day to flip him? Yes. But anybody that's watched this tape knows why Texas is giving it a swing. You know about the country. <laughs> hey, and you Jerry, have to give it a swing. Yeah. What, what about Smith and Rugbo? I want to I want to spend some time there because you know that that, that I like him. Low Hayden Lowe coming out of California. Yeah. Those talk about those two real quick. So Hayden Lowe, there's people on the West Coast that feel like this guy could be as good or better than Kayvon Thibodeau one day. And that's a mouthful because Kayvon Thibodeau was the number one player in the high at, in the country coming out of high school so they said one day that meant down the line late in college career and when i heard that i was like okay well he's not really being recruited that way okay well now he's visiting georgia in mid-may for an official he's got lsu he's yeah, got when you, were, when you were told that it was uh, two months ago right yeah and so, he hadn't had all those offers now it's he, starting to it's starting to percolate where texas you know, wasn't you know, the only you know how good you are when georgia recruits an edge out of westlake village california Man, it says a lot for your talent level, right? So he's going to be in this weekend, first time on campus. Then he comes back for a June 14th through 16th official visit. The visit Smith and Rogbo, first time on campus in a long time, if ever, today. Out of Ailey Hastings, Rod Wright. Hello, Rod Wright, the last national recruit on the D line out of Hastings High. Uh, Smith and Rogbo is now one of those guys. He went from two offers before the season to 30 plus. Now he's got that Zena. Uh, type of upside frame to him, maybe a little quicker off the ball than Cena, maybe more of a natural pass rush guy. Uh, but he's coming in with his uh, members of his coaching staff and a teammate you mentioned, Ike Okafor, who's 6'3", 260 pounds. He's a guy that has Arizona State and Cal official visits right now. Texas is just kind of monitoring him. We'll watch him in the spring, just see where that thing goes with him. Uh, pretty much a, a five tech that could be a three tech one day. Just a guy that just keep tabs on. Uh, Smith Arogbo, you know, USC, Oregon, everybody's trying on him. But really, right now, I mean, Oklahoma State is very much in that. Um, he doesn't have the national visit list quite yet, but I do think he'll get there 
uh, in May once college coaches come out in the spring evaluation period. Then, obviously, I want to mention Chase Sims, the D lineman out of Richmond Randall. Texas offered him in March. He's coming in for the first time uh, to Texas uh, as well, the 6'3", 290-pound defensive lineman from Richmond Randall. If there's a kid to out of today – that's going to end up having an official visit set up in June that doesn't right now, he may be one to watch. All right. Uh, I want to say thank you uh, to, again, to our sponsor. That's Laura Williams, uh, or excuse me, Laura Baker of Keller Williams. Uh, you can reach out to her at 512-784-0505. Uh, Laura's a friend and someone that's been working in the, uh, uh, the home buying and home listing business for a long period of time. Uh, in Austin and knows the area as well as anybody. She's also a big time Longhorn fan. So if you do call her, you might get a little talk about Quinn Ewers and uh, the offense, uh, but she'll also know a little bit uh, about uh, the uh, real estate industry, which is what you're really going to be calling her for. 512-784-0505. Laura at andyallenteam.com. She's also just good people uh, as well. All right. Hey, I want to mention this to you real quick, Jerry. Uh, right now, we know of one linebacker for sure that's expected in today, Elijah Barnes. There might be a guy from California that's committed to USC, but we're kind of monitoring that. And then there's three defensive backs um, worth mentioning, uh, Cade Phillips uh, and then Aiden Anding. Uh, Cade Phillips is out of the uh, Houston area, Fort Bend area. Uh, he is full go for Texas. Yes. Longhorns would love for him uh, to come, jump on board. Uh, and then Aiden Anding out of Ruston, Louisiana, who's a late uh, evaluation, but it seems to be picking up steam, steam with other teams as, as well. And then Jonah Williams, a safety athlete type out of Galveston Ball High School. Those are the three defensive backs we know of. Yeah. I want to say this, that we know of. There could be other guys yeah. that show up on campus right now, but uh, those guys plus Elijah Barnes, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think Texas is in a good spot for Elijah Barnes entering these uh, spring visits. He was at Ohio State recently. He's going to take uh, an official to Ohio State May 31st, June 2nd. Then he comes back to Texas June 21st, 23rd. I uh, watched him at the district track meet, at that district track meet on Wednesday, ran 10.96 with a little downwind uh, at 230 pounds. I don't care. That's fast. He's moving with long arms. He's a guy <laughs> Texas loves. They would take right now. Uh, defensive backs, Cade Phillips, six, almost closing on 6'2", 180 pounds, 80, 81 inch wingspan, 10 and a half. 10-inch hands, over 10-inch hands, uh, tw long jump 24-7 this year. Uh, Texas, I think, leads A&M and o LSU in that one. He'll also visit Baylor, I think, in May. Uh, but he's supposed to come back for an official visit June 21st through 23rd. And I agree with you, Texas will take him today. Um, Jonah Williams, interesting, Oklahoma lean. Texas is fighting there. Uh, he, he was, he's got visits set up, I think, in June to LSU and Ohio State right now. Oklahoma probably fighting for that 21st through 23rd, that last visit. But, he, look, he hadn't been on campus in a while. Um, this He wasn't there for the January 20 junior day. So it's a big visit for Jonah Williams with this Texas staff uh, trying to cut into that Oklahoma lead, which is a football, baseball recruitment. Um, and then you have uh, Anding, uh, the defensive back out of Rust in the corner. So interesting to me. He was at Miami last weekend. He was at Arkansas midweek. Texas offered him March 28th. Sark was on the phone with him Monday and got him to come down uh, for this April 6th visit, which tells you how much they actually do like him. They forced the issue to get one, one phone call to get this kid on campus. Uh, really good basketball player, long jumps, 22 and a half feet. Uh, he's a guy to watch for Texas. He's a talented corner that just got back in the football this past year as a junior, and there's a reason his recruitment's going to take off here in, in May. I think Texas wants to get him on campus before this spring evaluation period because he's going to pick up a lot more offers in May. All right, before I let you go here, uh, talking about all these guys coming in, I want to ask two questions, okay? One is, Texas had a decommitment on Thursday from Anthony yeah. Williams, linebacker out of Pearland, Shadow Creek. I want you to talk about that and what your feelings are that. And then, do you expect any surprises today? Like, whether that's a commitment, whether that's uh, somebody showing up on campus that we're unaware of. Uh, so, start with Anthony Williams, though, because people are asking, have asked yeah. a little bit about that. And I want to get your official take on the record kind of. Yeah, look, this has nothing to do with Anthony Williams as a prospect. He's going to visit TCU. He's going to visit Baylor. He may visit Florida. He's a very good prospect. I think when Johnny Nansen was hired, that kind of changed the calculus on what they were looking for in this class. 
uh, at, at the uh, at linebacker position. And then a guy like Matea Tang Tagoa pops up and is an elite, elite prospect. He committed to USC. We'll see on that. I mean, these USC commitments are – they're not the most solid guys I've seen in my years doing this right now. Um, but then Jonathan Cunningham pops on the radar at North Crowley. So I think some guys that maybe fit Nansen, maybe fit where they're headed uh, a little bit more uh, than Anthony Williams did popped up on the radar. And, and I think Texas didn't quite push as hard for Anthony Williams here in recent weeks. There's a reason I left them off these visit lists. I mean, yeah, I, I put and him I in the be best class with scenario you, with the caveat of as long as he's committed. So this is not a surprise to us. As far as somebody uh, that could pop up on campus, you know, I, I, I think it's possible. Uh, so the, the thought process, too, is on top of those other linebackers, you're also thinking about Riley Pettijohn as well as uh, Bo Barnes. And so adding Anthony Williams to that maybe takes you out of the running with those other linebackers that yep. may be ahead of him in the pecking order. And I agree with you as far as the, uh, as far as the surprise, I mean, they're surprises for a reason, right? I mean, <laughs> that's part of it. Yeah. Um, but I will say this, I've learned to expect surprises a little bit on these kind of visit days where there's a lot of things going on and somebody slips through the crack. Maybe it's a t top 2026 20, player that shows up and uh, above and beyond racing Guillory and, and Troy Hune, you know what I mean? That we talk about. Yeah. Uh, so it could be a lot of stuff. A lot of receivers on campus today. We mentioned that the, the three, I guess, five stars with more French and potentially Lockett as well. All right, Jerry, that's going to do it uh, for this episode of the Sunday Conversation. Thanks again, once again, to Laura Baker of Keller Williams Realty, 512-784-0505. Uh, if you're out looking for a house today or tomorrow, make sure you give her a shout. Uh, Jerry, thanks for your time, bud. Good luck. And we'll talk to you later today about what went on at this uh, uh, event. Uh, may also have a little chatter about the scrimmage as well, which is going to be really interesting. Spring Longhorns getting after it in practice number nine later today.